All right, well, welcome to this week's Prophecy Update. Thank you for joining us. Uh, like always, please put comments in the comments or chat section, um, and let's get started. So obviously there's a lot going on just prophecy-wise and, and specifically the war in Israel, right? It's been happening since October 7th, about three weeks ago. And uh, listen, the crazy part, or ho hopefully this seems crazy to you, it seems crazy to me, is that we're seeing more and more and more people actually supporting the terrorism of Hamas and Hezbollah and these uh, the pro-Palestinian riots that are happening in the United States, but also worldwide, yeah, right? We're seeing those... Um, Muslims and others rioting worldwide um, because of the of what's happening in Israel. Again, they're rioting against Israel for again for the terrorists. They're encouraging terrorism on a level that um, a lot of people are saying is either unprecedented or uh, on a level that we haven't seen since 1930s, 1940s uh, Nazi Germany. So. What's going on? Why is this happening? Why are there so many college campuses in the United States and around the world? There's professors, there's um, people in all parts of or walks of life and in other areas of business as well um, um, supporting this. Like, why would they support this? And so I want to start by saying this um, persecution of the nation of Israel will mark the tribulation period especially the second half of the tribulation period. That's one of the, uh, let me switch that. That's one of the things that we're going to see or that, that you can see in the Bible, specifically Revelation chapter 12, that's going to mark the, 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 the 70th week of Daniel, right? We're going to see Satan come against the nation of Israel like never before during that time. So I want to read, um, uh, this is Revelation chapter 12. I'm going to read verse 13 and verse 17. Read the whole chapter kind of for context uh, in that. And as you, uh, as you read the whole chapter, the dragon is Satan, the woman is the nation of Israel, and the male child is uh, is Jesus, Messiah, right? And I, I <laughs> almost, as you read it, it's almost obvious who these uh, figures symbolize, right? And we're told straight up um, a little bit after that in Revelation that the the dragon is the devil. It, it's clear about that. And I'm laughing because I've heard people actually act like that was confusing for them to figure out. And I'm laughing because I remember the first time I ever read that, new believer, never read the Bible before, but I read through Revelation chapter 12. And in my head, I kind of thought, you know, already that that's who it was. Is the dragon Satan? Because it seems like that. Is the male child Jesus? Because it seems that way. And if he's Jesus, is the woman Israel? Or could the woman be Mary for sure? But the woman's Israel. So anyways, for context, that's how uh, the symbology goes there. Verse 13 says this. So again, the dragon is Satan. This is during the tribulation period. It says, now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth... He persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Satan and his angels fight with Michael and the good angels in heaven. Michael wins. Satan's cast to the earth, and he is angry, right? And it says he's, he's, he's like, woe to the people on the earth at that time because of the great wrath of the dragon, and he's going to come and persecute the nation of Israel during that time. And that it literally means to pursue or hunt down the Jews during the tribulation period. And he's, he's going to kill um, a whole bunch of them during that time. The next verse I want to read is verse 17. It says, And the dragon, Satan, was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the Jews that were saved, and I believe you can include in that as well tribulation saints that um, got, got saved during that time as well, um, but he is going to come after the Jews like, like no other time in world history during that time. I'm bringing all this up because why are we seeing so much anti-Semitism and even people siding with terrorism right now? It's because we're leading up to the 70th week of Daniel or the tribulation period. And so as we're getting closer to that time, the world is looking more like that time. And so I believe that's one of the main reasons we're seeing 
so many of these things uh, happen in the world today. So um, here, here's a couple of examples. I'm going to read a couple articles. You've probably heard about a few of these. Um, but, but there's people, again, actually supporting what the terrorists did on October 7th in their terror attack on the nation of Israel. This is from ynetnews.com. It says, Associated Press instructs reporters to avoid terror label for Hamas. They, they instructed their reporters, hey, listen, you guys, don't even label, or don't, don't, in your reporting, don't label Hamas as terrorists. It says this, the world's largest news agency, the Associated Press, instructs reporters and organizations that rely on its style guide to, av uh, to avoid referring to Hamas as a terrorist organization, according to a review of the organization's standards. So they won't call terrorists terrorists. Right, let me read a little bit more. However, the agency allows its journalists and editors to use the term terror in direct quotations or when attributed to authorities or others. So they can use it in other situations, but not in direct reference to Hamas. It says instead of terror or terrorists, the agency advises using terms like militants, Hamas fighters, attackers, or combatants, that is ridiculous and crazy and insane. It says, when it comes to Jerusalem, the agency instructs not to refer to the city as the capital of Israel. Israel considers the entire city to be its capital. I just wanted to start with that to say, hey, even in the, the, the labeling, they don't want to use the term terrorist. And I'll say this, if you can't call what they did on October 7th terror, and I'm going to uh, mention them briefly, okay? We know for sure that there was um, innocent men, uh, men, women, and children. Civilians were uh, brutally murdered in their homes, unsuspecting, unsus right? They attacked the innocent. There were women that were raped, even raped next to and, and on top of other dead bodies. There were infants that were beheaded. There were children that were tortured. And I'll, I'll just stop right there. You, we, I could go on with what they did, but I think... That's enough in the videos and information's out there if you want to see exactly what they did. But just based on what I just said, how can you not label that terrorism? And by the way, to anybody that would argue, well, that's not really what happened because they argue against, hey, the babies weren't really beheaded. We now have, and you can specifically find this on Amir Tsarfati's Telegram channel, we now have that terrorists own video evidence of what they did. So there is absolutely no denying it. If you deny that, you don't want to believe the truth, right? You want to believe the lie and not the truth, which, by the way, lines right up with the end times, right? The deception's going to increase. People want to believe the lie. But if you can't call those acts I just mentioned terrorism, um, you're part of you're part of the terrorism in that you're agreeing with it. If you can't stand against it, in this instance, you're agreeing with it. It was barbaric, it was evil, it was um, inhumane, it, it, you know, all, the, all the synonyms that would go with that. So the, the Associated Press is saying, hey, we're not gonna call these guys terrorists. Why? Because in my opinion, they're supporting what they did by not calling it evil. Um, here's another one. So this is from Zero Hedge. It says, pro-Palestinian mob shuts down Minneapolis street, terrorizes motorists. So they had riots in Minneapolis. Again, this is pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas supporters in the streets, terrorizing motorists. And in this article, it uh, mentions one elderly guy that was driving through where they were in the streets and they harassed his car. And, and uh, here, here's what they do. So they did the same thing during the... Uh, BLM riots, right? The Black Lives Matter riots. They they harass this guy's car, and then when you go to the Twitter feeds, and this is all in this Zero Hedge report, when you go to the Twitter feeds of some of these people that are um, participating in the, the riots, they say they're the ones that got attacked, right? So they're in the streets, they're supporting terrorism, they're going up to this guy's car who's driving through, and then they say, oh, look, he was he was trying to attack us, because he, you know, he doesn't agree with us, or whatever the reason is, they play the victim when they're actually the ones um, harming victims, right? They're the ones doing the chaos. It says, 
Uh, if you were wondering why the pro-Palestinian protests in the U.S. today are starting to look a lot like the BLM riots of 2020, it's probably probably because they are made up of the same people with the same political agenda. It goes into um, kind of a political unity with uh, um, Antifa and BLM and some and what how they're using this to uh, to cause unrest, but. Um, again, pro-Palestinian riots. And if you see some of Amir Sarfati's Telegram post and some of the things that he puts on his YouTube channel, again, I linked his YouTube channel in the description of this video. So if you want a good news source to follow regarding all the stuff that's happening in Israel, Amir Sarfati, it's called Behold Israel YouTube. Click on the link in the description. But um, he shows video evidence of Palestine... Palestinian civilians going into uh, uh, Israel right along with the terror, like taking part in the terror themselves. He also says that 80% of the Palestinian people that live there, um, they voted for Hamas, right? They, they are in support of Hamas and what they're doing. He goes into a lot more detail, um, but you can see it's not what the media is telling us. Most of the media uh, is not actually the reality that's happening on the ground. It's not the political situation that's that's there. And so um, we're seeing a lot of this. Here's, here's one more. Um, here's a map. This is, I got this from Amir's Telegram channel. I printed it out. But it says, data on anti-Semitic incidents in the U.S. since Hamas attack on Israel. So this is just since uh, October 7th when they did the attack and it lists all these bullet points of harassment, vandalism, and assault against Jews. So um, here's what it looks like. All the, all the points, again, are harassment, vandalism, or assault against uh, people that are Jews or that are perceived to be uh, Jews. Again, that's only over the past few weeks that 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 many attacks have happened, and that's only in the United States, right? And on there, it's not including all, all of the demonstrations and riots, and again, there's been um, universities, there's been professors at universities that are coming out in support of Hamas, saying, uh, for the, from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free. I think that's the phrase, but it means they want to take over the entire land of Israel, right? They want to eliminate the Jews, and they want to be the ones... Uh, that take over. Again, you can go to Amir's Telegram and see there's people posting on social media. Uh, one lady, just he just put today, that was, uh, she's in med school, and she uh, was cheering on the attacks when she heard about the brutal uh, things the, the terrorists were doing. She's posting like, run, run, Zionist, run, when she saw the murder and massacres that were happening. Well, how do you not kick that person out of medical school that puts stuff like that on social media? Um, it's getting crazy. It's getting crazy fast, but it's biblical, right? It, it lines up with the end times. And, and so I want to say this. As followers of Christ, as people that are seeking biblical truth, listen, we got to reject the idea that anything, any notion or idea that what Hamas did on October 7th was in any way okay or in any way justified. Completely reject that, right? That is, that's a satanic thought, a satanic idea. And I want to say this, um, God's going to protect his people and he will deliver his people. This is Zechariah uh, chapter 12. I want to read verses two and three, but look at what God says about uh, the nation of Israel. I believe this was... Um, the, the complete fulfillment of this prophecy I'm about to read will be during the tribulation period at Armageddon as the second coming of Jesus Christ happens. But I think we're seeing some of it, like kind of an early fulfillment of it or the, the shadow of the fulfillment of it uh, for sure right now. Here's what it says. Zechariah 12, 2. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples, to all the Arab nations that surround it, when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth gathered against it. God is going to deliver his people 
No matter what anybody tries to do or say, God is going to deliver his people. And so basically, the, a cup of drunkenness and a very heavy stone are ways to say those that come against the nation of Israel with the objective to destroy Israel, Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, right? God is going to, their Jerusalem will be a cup of drunkenness to them. Or like when you become drunk so much that you're going to stumble and fall down, that's what's going to happen to you as you try to take over the nation of Israel, specifically the city of Jerusalem that they're coming against as well. And it's going to be like a very heavy stone, right? That those that try to lift the stone can't lift it. Why? Because God is protecting his people and God is protecting his chosen nation, the people um, of Israel. So how should we as, as Christians respond to this? I did a, a, a sermon and an update a couple weeks ago about um, God's chosen people. Why should the church have a passion for the nation of Israel? And it's because the nation of Israel, these are God's chosen people because God has a passion for the nation of Israel, because God is not done with the nation of Israel, and because, listen to me, there would be no church today without the nation of Israel because the Messiah, Jesus the Messiah, came through this nation, God's chosen people. And so check that out if you haven't already seen it. Um, again, it's a couple weeks old, a couple weeks ago, a sermon on our Rumble page uh, and then also a prophecy update. The sermon goes into more detail, but um, as Christians, we should support Israel. In Genesis 12, 3, there's a, a, a promise by God that says, I'll bless those who bless you and curse him who curses you. To Abraham, who he said was going to be the father uh, of a great nation that God would make from him. So, Number one, this, if you're a follower of Christ and you're watching this and you're like, man, how do I respond to what you're saying and to what's happening uh, with Israel and with this war? Number one, pray for the peace of, of Jerusalem. We're commanded to do that in Psalm 122, verse six. Pray for Jerusalem, pray for the nation of Israel. Please keep them in your prayers. Number two is uh, support God's chosen people. Um, Verbally, vocally, on social media, support the nation of Israel. Again, Genesis 12, 3, I'll bless those who bless you and curse him who curses you. And pray for our administration in our country that they would genuinely support Israel, which it seems that they're doing right now, but with those guys, you never know what the real motive is. So pray for our um, leaders that they would support Israel. And this, listen, Christians, church, don't be knowingly deceived. There is so much deception going on right uh, out there right now, specifically regarding this topic. And so here's what I'm going to say. Get the truth of what's happening by uh, following the sources that you know are going to tell you the truth. So in the description of this video, I put, again, Amir Tsarfati's um, YouTube channel. It's called Behold Israel. You can click on that, follow him there. Uh, also follow him on um, Telegram. I also put David Tal, his YouTube channel. It's called the Balagan Connection. Both of those guys are Messianic Jews. They're Jewish men who have received Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they both currently live in Israel. So they're on the ground reporting what's happening from there. They both have military and political connections there, so they get a lot of good information quickly. Um, and the last one is Hope for Our Times on YouTube. That's by Pastor Tom Hughes. He also is putting out a lot of good, true information about what's happening uh, with, with what's going on with Israel. So check those out. I know there's other good sources out there as well. Those are three that I follow, that I trust, that are, are giving uh, the truth. So seek the truth and, uh, and get the truth out there. So share things, talk to people about what's really going on. And here's the most important thing. Um, all of the stuff that we're seeing with Israel, but also all the other stuff, points to the fact that Jesus is coming soon. It just points to the nearness of the return of our bridegroom for his bride. Jesus returning for his church. The rapture is soon. And so we want to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out to as many people as we can. So be sharing the gospel and be praying for people to receive Christ as their Savior. Hey, pray for the nation of Israel to receive Jesus as well, because the majority of them today are not saved. We know it's going to take the tribulation to get them to come to Christ as a nation, but, but keep praying for them individually that they would receive Christ. So again, thank you for watching, and here's the best part to me. Listen, if you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you've not said, God, I'm a sinner, I need a Savior, 
if you don't know for sure that your sins are forgiven, if you don't know that when you die, that you're going to go to heaven for sure, listen, today is the day to give your life to Jesus. The Bible says that we're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all, none of us are perfect. And that our sin separates us from a holy, righteous God. And there's nothing we can do to bridge that gap. But it says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And that if you will confess him as Lord with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so um, it says that anybody that wants to say, I'm a sinner, I need a savior, I believe Jesus is my savior. Anybody that's willing to, to pray that, to believe that, to put their full faith in Jesus for salvation, anybody can be saved. So if that's you, if you're watching this um, right now and you want to say, I, I, I need Jesus. I want to say yes to Jesus. Listen, right where you are, pray this prayer. Just say these words from your heart to God. Just pray them. Believe them. Mean them. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I do need a Savior. I believe that Jesus is my Savior. Pray this. Pray, I believe that He died for my sins on the cross and that He rose again from the dead he ascended to heaven, and he's coming back again one day. I give my whole life to you. Please be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, would you do me a favor? Send me a message. You can go to sunshinenm.org. Click on contact. You can email me there or go to our uh, Facebook page. You can send a message there. Um, I want to pray for you. I want to make sure you have a Bible. And if you need help getting plugged into a Bible teaching church, help you there. But God bless you guys. Um, keep getting the gospel out there. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. We'll see you next time.